talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing Big Show coming to your way, uh, coming your way this week. But uh, Nikki Duckstein, welcome along. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. And uh, what's going on here? I don't know. Uh, ads. Over ads. to you. Hey, ads. You there? Are you there? <laughs> hey. I don't want to poke him too hard, but ads. Where are you? Uh, Adam Ring is uh, he's gone AWOL. <laughs> he has been a victim of. Um, the great airlines we have servicing Australia. And I did say to him on the phone this morning when he said his, his uh, flight was delayed, I said, so yeah. you're flying Jetstar? And he said, no. And I thought, well, who else goes wrong? And then he said, Rex. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but then when he landed, mm -hmm. uh, I think his flight was meant to be about 10 o'clock this morning. When he landed at about yeah. 7.30 and said, I'm not going to make the show because yeah. I haven't got a car and I can't get home and back again, um, he said that Rex blamed Jetstar. Being late. Oh, so we're so, still jet star so after still jet all that. Star, I'm sure. Uh, I'm <laughs> Thanks, sure, Ads. Uh, yeah, that, that's good. But anyway, and uh, everyone we rang at late notice couldn't come in. So if there's anyone interested in being a co host of Talking Fishing, please send your details on our social media. Um, just in case Adam doesn't turn up, but good old Louis made a little canoe he's for us. Well, yeah, he's so, got his little kayak um, canoe. Where, did this, where do you reckon this thing came from? I was saying, I think Tiff, you'll be watching. I reckon this is from his birthday cake. Ah, Tiff cooked. Yeah. Adam, a birthday cake. Yep. And, and this is this is Adam. Yeah, or is it is it really a Ken doll? Well, I, don't, I don't know. It's it doesn't look very Ken doll. <laughs> Adam. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, he'll be joining us. Uh, we're going to get some good input from uh, Adam later on in the program. But uh, big show to get through, Nikki. Uh, we're two days away from cod opening. Yeah. You heard much about cod opening? Not this year, unfortunately, no. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? Mm, very quiet. So all the floods... Um, we, we, we talked to Terry Phillips from Tackle World in Echuca on the radio uh, almost every week and I think he was saying to me the other day, Nikki, that mm. uh, the, the floods in the Murray at Echuca peaked at 7.5, Yep. but they've been on 7.2 for the last month. So they're wow. virtually, the floods have only dropped about one foot since Oof. peaking. That's, that's, uh, that's scary. a lot of water. Yeah, that's a lot of water going downstream. You won't be fishing that for, for cod yep. and yet... The Cod Classic is on this weekend, and, and I know Greg from work's going to that. So mm. big competition now that uh, Go Fishing the Gamby's not on. Um, yeah. There'll be people going to it, but there's no talk about um, about the uh, about fishing for cod at all. No, no, very quiet. Yeah. Fingers crossed maybe next year before it closes. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully they have a good, good late season um, for the cod. Uh, all right, we're getting yelled at. We've got to go to Catch of the Week already. Folks, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Have a look at this. Now, this is... Hey, Nikki, this is because I used to work there. Yeah, right? I love this about it. Yeah, Keep let's going. Let's put first one up. Don Newman, snapper off Blue Scope. Where's it's, Blue Scope Steel? Well, Never heard of that spot. No, no. It's only been called Blue Scope Steel for about 20 years, but it's Lysarts. <laughs> yeah, I know. Lysarts become BHP, then BHP Steel, then Blue Scope Steel, and... Because I worked now, there for 17 years, tell I me, should know that. Did Don actually uh, say that, or was that he your doing? He sent that in. No, he sent that in with blue scope. Okay, all right. I, Shout I out get to why Don. There's a sinker wrapped around the tail of that fish either. Can you see oh, the there is too. <laughs> on your Don. Adds a bit of weight, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I'm mm. surprised because Don has a still got one of those Nokia phones. Oh wow. Yeah, he's the only person I, that I, I think back in the day. Mm. Um, you might have been able to send a text message, but yeah. I'm not sure they had cameras. No, um, I don't remember it having anyway, a camera. Anyway, someone was on board that had a camera for Don that time. That was good. So, well done, Don, uh, in his 97th year. Uh, all right, let's keep moving on. Snapper, plenty. Um, let's head over to Port Phillip now. Tommy Pipunic, a lovely 3.155 kilo snapper. Beautiful. Caught somewhere in Port Phillip. Well done. Good work, Tommy. Nice stuff. Nice fish. Big smile on his face yeah, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Great to see. 
been some good snap around. I'll tell you what, this next guy, mm. he would have had trouble on election day, <laughs> eh? Right? No. <laughs> he would have copped it. Like, but imagine when he went up to the polling booth, right? <laughs> That's and right, they, you've got to say said, your last your name? name. That's right. And he goes, Guy Andrews. <laughs> Guy Andrews, there he is. There you go. Well, I tell you what, on election day he was out and he got two beautiful snapper. Winner, winner. So <laughs> on your Guy Andrews, but I'm, they would have said you'd taken that. You know, that's not your real <laughs> name them. at the polling booth. But anyway, mm. on your Guy, um, this is a cracking fish. It's good to see. Uh, there, there seems to be this class of fish amongst all the mm. fish that are being caught, and particularly yep. I think in Port Phillip now. Yeah. Um, that are, that are good fish. This is an 80 centimetre caught by David Montebello on the spoil grounds. Oh, look at that fish. It looks longer than 80. Look at that. I've never caught one that big, have oh, you? No, not that size. What's, what's your biggest? Oh, you? no, mine's only like a four or five kilo. Oh, nothing no, like in that four level. four for me. Yeah, like it's, yeah. That's amazing. Well done. Best part about snapper season for me is the whiting fishing. So That's right. <laughs> <laughs> It's the way it is, so, uh, but well done. Uh, all right, next one, Altona up north has yep. been on fire. I mean, I don't know if you follow the water temperature graphs in Port Phillip, but they've actually taken a spike down. So yep. water temperature sitting around 16 degrees at the moment in Port Phillip. Different parts yep. are, are different, of course, but all that rain really put a few things off. Also, a cold current came down the east coast, so uh, it has affected the water temperature. But you get up to places like Altona up north, and the water is certainly warmer, so... And uh, someone that got out there was James Nanapieri. Uh, have a look at this. A lovely uh, four and a half kilo. His wife sent that in, said it'd make his night tonight. Oh, so well that's done, James. lovely. Look at that, the facial no, expression. Probably throwing a can at his wife right now to say, you sent that in. <laughs> you should you have know. sent it. Yeah. Anyway. No, that's well a, done. Good stuff. Cracker. Good smile. Well done, James. Yep. So got to celebrate good fish. Yeah, why not? You? So there you go. Um, another one from up Altona way. Have a look at this. Jeff Galea. 10. Oh, wow. KB. Fish of a lifetime. Look at that. That's a monster. Ver and very silver, not very red. No. Really well done. Oh, far out. You've got to love that. That's well into the 20 pounds. Yeah, one if he's going to get that stuffed yeah. and on the wall. Yeah. Mm. It's a beautiful fish. Uh, someone that was on Catch of the Week last week is also featuring this week Clara Nackick. Well done, Clara. A five oh. and a half. Oh, 5.4 kilo snapper off Black Rock. Black Rock seems to be good. Look, at, just a have spot. a look at this fish. We can leave that yeah. one up on the screen for a second. Um, look at the fins on that, but look at the size of the tail. Yeah, yeah, very big tail. That is a fit looking fish. Mm. They're great, great quality this year. You can really tell. Yeah. yeah now, beautiful. you did a charter on the weekend, We did, did yeah. Where we went for some, um, for Port Arlington. We yep. went for a bit of flathead, just yep. a bit of a women's charter. So we didn't target any snapper. And strangely enough, we caught nothing but flathead. I oh, thought, really? I thought we'd get a banjo, a gurnet, nothing but yeah, flathead. only got flathead. Yep, so the biggest S one went 44, so. Sand flathead or blue spot? Blue spot. Really? Mm, so it was good. So you targeted them? Yeah, it was good. Wow. Yeah. How good Girls that? had a good day out. Well, so. I'll tell you what, at Port Arlington, there is also some snapper. Ray Aquilina from over that way. Send us in this pic. Have a look at that. Oh, nice. Beautiful pair of snapper. Well done, Ray. Good contributor to the show. Beautiful place over mm. there too, isn't it? Interesting. You've, you've separated the word there, Dave, too. Am I not meant to? No. It's all one word. It's all one word. Oh, well, Port Arlington. No. They'll be very upset to it's hear if that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, next one. Uh, a, a beautiful whiting. This is the other thing that's really interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, I haven't done a lot of trips because we've been a little bit busy at work lately. <laughs> just a little, yeah. Uh, just a little. But my whiting fishing, um, the best I've got for the season is 39 centimetres, and there seems to be a, a distinct year class of 39s and 33s. But young Angus Warren got a 40 centimetre from Clifton Springs. Mm. Beautiful fish. Well oh, done, nice. Angus. And I reckon those fish by February, mm. March, they're going to be good 42, 43 centimetres. Oh, yeah, they'll be feeding well. Yeah. No nets in the bay, so yeah. there'll be plenty of food. All right, let's head along the coast, and Port Albert's a beautiful place to fish. And young Hudson Slater got a lovely snapper from Port Albert. Oh, well done, nice Hudson. Nice, Hudson. Great work. Look at the smile. And I tell you what, there hasn't been too many trout photos because <laughs> trout season has been almost mm. non-existent because of the floods and the high levels of water in the, in the rivers and, of course, uh, dirty rivers, but... Nathan Vella was trolling in Lake Hilden proper, which yep. is sitting at near 100%. Got himself a beautiful brown. Wow. Have a look at that. 
Well done, Nathan. There you go. 2.4 kilos. Beautiful fish. Really well done. All right. If you'd like to send in a pic of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pics to info at ifish.com.au. Fish on! Yeah, I want to go fishing. We'll be getting some uh, good info out of Adam after the break, but also coming up, fisheries news, including a look at the new piers at Rye Boat Ramp, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wear the line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. Uh, Adam Ring is AWOL, uh, heading back from Tullamarine Airport because he decided to fly Rex, who blamed Jetstar it's for being Jetstar. late today That's from it. the Gold Coast. So, uh, Ad's not here tonight, but Nikki. Um, some, oh, lots of news. Lots of news coming yep. this week. So this is a cracker, right? This is this has got an unusual twist. This one. So uh, this wasn't. Oh, I was going to give it away at the start. This wasn't Terry's biggest dusky flathead from a recent trip to Malacuta, but it was the most valuable. Have a listen to this story. Terry from Bendigo and Jim from Moama had teamed up for another trip to Cuda, which they do with a group of mates every autumn and every spring. Trolling small stump jumper lures. Of course they would use stump jumpers for flathead. <laughs> like, who does it? I, I've never Cod heard of it fisherman either. from Moamara <laughs> and Bendigo, I tell you. Trolling small stump jumper lures near Gypsy Point in Jim's 4.3 metre savage, the pair landed several fish for the session, including one dusky of 40 centimetres, which had gone into the live well. Little did they know, let's have a look at the fish. Little did they know at the time that particular fish was carrying a golden tag. How good is that? <laughs> Worth two grand. Back at the boat ramp, the catch was unloaded onto the fish cleaning table for filleting. It was only then did Terry spy something odd about one of the fish. He scraped back the mud and the algae to reveal winner on a yellow plastic tag. As if flatties need another reason to love them. Terry split the win winnings with Jim because they're not actually sure who caught the winning flatty. <laughs> <laughs> It'll cover the cost of this trip and the next one, said Terry. Fair to say some of the prize money might also purchase a few more stumpies for the tackle box. There you go. Um, what a great story. <laughs> yeah. Terry and... You hear um, it a bit about the... They go to fill it at Terry the... Terry and Jim. The cleaning I'll, I'll never forget we um, fished that comp down at Lake Tyres mm. and um, and one of the guys came from up the Goulburn Way and that... And he had, he had like 80 pound litre and cod lures. That's all he had with him. So anyway. Did he catch fish though? No, didn't no. catch a thing. Uh, all right, next one. Launching has been made easier at Rye Boat Ramp thanks to recent upgrades to its western jetty. The four lane ramp is one of the busiest on the eastern side of the bay. So it's important to have it in top shape ahead of summer. Let's have a look at some of the photos. Cycle through them as we talk. So there's the old pier. Mornington Peninsula Shire Council used funding from the Structural Maintenance Grants Program from Better Boating Victoria to improve the ageing structure and associated facilities. So obviously they're ripping up the old yeah, timber deck. Yeah, as they go, yeah. Putting down that recycled plastic stuff. All the timber piles were replaced or repaired. A new fiberglass deck was installed and maintenance was carried out on fenders, handrails and solar lights to ensure they're in good working order. The jetty also got a fresh coat of paint, so it looks really good. Rise, one of several ramps being upgraded on the peninsula with plans also being developed for improvements at Fisherman's Beach, Snapper Point, Tootgarook and Anthony's Nose. So look out for those. Uh, one last bit of news, launching... Oh, oh that's, that's the same one. Uh, the next one was about, meant to be about the cleaning tables and I haven't got that with me. So anyway, <laughs> have a look at, at the cleaning tables at Patterson Lakes. Now, people said yep. 
Patterson Lakes boat ramp would be far too busy for fish cleaning tables. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, have a look at this. The snapper are lined up, the go. punters are lined up, and yes, on a very, very busy day, it might be hard to park, but most of the time, it's good and uh, absolutely getting a workout. Now, we're going to look at Hastings later on, but people say that's the second best fish cleaning table okay, in Victoria. Okay, second best. Hastings is best now. Yeah, I've seen there's so. something new there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, but yeah. how good is that? All right, now one of the big announcements I wanted to get to and show uh, you people at home a little bit about was um, the announcement by the Labor government, if they were re-elected, would open up Tarrago Reservoir to fishing. And it's a very, very special place. About two years ago now, Nikki, I mm. recorded um, a story about Tarrago for the Wild Trout Conference that was held online because of COVID, yeah. who would have thought? And uh, we just want to have a look at that because Tarrago, it's going to get opened at some stage in the very near future. And this is what it's all about. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the place now. And uh, only recently, July 2020, uh, the boys from Arthur Ryler Institute went in and did a, a fish survey and there were some exceptional results. So let me talk a little bit about the reservoir first. The Tarrago Reservoir is located uh, north of Warrigal. Uh, in West Gippsland. It's approximately 100 kilometres east of Melbourne, so easily a day trip for visitors from Melbourne. And when you get to see some of the photos of the fish very shortly that are in this reservoir, this is certainly a destination that people could travel interstate to and almost international to, because uh, if it ends up being as good as I think it will be, it will be well known in the trout circles for, you know, for a, a, a unique place to go fishing. Um, the reservoir was constructed from rock fill with a clay core and it was completed in 1969, so it's not that old. And it was enlarged in 1971. Tarrago Reservoir was closed to fishing in 1977. So many people had, what, six years to fish it? That would have been a special time, I reckon. And it was closed to minimise the risk of contamination of domestic water supplies to the Mornington Peninsula. In 1994, Melbourne Water stopped using water from the reservoir as it had become unsuitable for drinking. But following the construction of a water treatment plant, the reservoir was reconnected to the Metropolitan Water Supply in 2009. Now, it's got a big fence around it. You can't get into Tarrago Reservoir at the moment. Uh, a little bit about the water in there. Based on Tarrago Reservoir water storage records, the maximum storage level is 26 metres. Since 1975, when the dam was constructed, the level has been above 23 metres for 37 of the last 46 years. The lowest storage level was recorded in May 1980 at 18.7 metres and April 2007 at 18.9 metres. So it holds good water um, most of the time. Now, there's some unbelievable uh, records around uh, stocking at this place and stocking of the Tarrago River. So just the river, this is before the reservoir was built. Uh, it first occurred in 1898 and um, it's, it's quite incredible that they've got those sort of records, but there was a, um, a story about it in the leader in uh, Melbourne on the 22nd of October, 1898. It was actually on page 18, if anyone's still got a copy of that newspaper. I'm sure if Ross Wynn Stanley's watching this, he will probably have a copy. Um, 800 brown trout fry from the Geelong hatcheries was, were released back then in 1898. From then until 1969, the river was stocked mostly with brown trout with more frequent stocking occurring after 1930. Generally, up to 3,000 fish were stocked each year, but in 1961, it must have been a big year, 30,375 brown trout were released. Rainbow trout were only stocked into the river on two occasions. That was in 1916 and 1964. Since its construction, the Tarrago Reservoir was stocked annually with rainbow trout from 1969 to 1976, 5,000 to 43,000, somewhere in between that each year. Again, you can see the graph up on the screen and it just shows how many fish were stocked. Since its construction, the Tarrago Reservoir was stocked annually with rainbow trout from 1969 to 1976, between 5,000 and 43,000 fish. But no brown trout were stocked into the reservoir. Stocking ceased presumably 
as a result of the reservoir being closed to fishing in 1977. No other fish species have been stocked into these waters. Despite extensive stocking of the reservoir with rainbow trout between 1969 and 1975, and suggestions from anglers that the species may be present above the reservoir, rainbow trout have not been recorded in any fishery survey and may no, no longer be present in the reservoir nor the river. There's just no sign of rainbow trout. The size of the trout. Now, I went up and spent a day with Jason and uh, I'm hopeless with names, he's offsider. I'll just call him my old mate. So Jason and old mate, they had the electro fishing out and to do this survey and I went and joined them. And um, I, was, I was just absolutely blown away back in July to see, I guess, the quality of fish, the size of the fish and the abundance. And, and I'm, I'm not telling a lie when I say you couldn't walk another five metres without finding another fish. Every five metres was a monster brown. It was remarkable. Uh, brown trout in the reservoir, uh, they ranged in total length from 40.2 centimetres. So that was the smallest fish that could be found in the reservoir and were up to 64.8 centimetres. They averaged considerably larger than brown trout in the river, which was 7.6 centimetres. So there were some smaller ones found in the river, but up to 63.5 centimetres. Now, I reckon I had photos taken with about 30 fish that were all between 50 and 63 centimetres. They're absolutely remarkable fish. In both the 2010 and 2020 surveys, recruits, which are fish that are less than 12 centimetres, were present in low numbers only in the river above the reservoir and were absent from the reservoir, but results dominated the catch in the river above the reservoir in the March 1993 survey, the same month as the 2010 survey. These observations suggest that strong recruitment does occur in the Tarrago River from time to time, but not every year. The size range of brown trout in Tarrago Reservoir is exceptional when compared to other Victorian lakes and reservoirs surveyed in winter using mesh nets. Brown trout from 2010 and 2020 surveys were within the top 10 size ranges for unexploited populations such as Tarrago Reservoir. Typically, they have a high proportion of larger, older fish uh, are present. Many of the other Victorian lakes and reservoirs surveyed that are exported and fished to a lesser or greater extent, which can reduce the average size of fish and percentage of fish over the legal size limit. Now, a little bit about what they're eating. Uh, might blow you away this one too. The stomach contents of 21 brown trout were examined. Now that means that Jason and old mate took home 42 fillets on the tipping. Good on your boys. 30%, 33% of which were empty. 33% contained trout eggs and 28% with goldfish and unidentified fish. And 14% had aquatic invertebrates, shrimp and plankton. Most of the brown trout with the empty stomachs were caught in the river above the reservoir. Brown trout in the reservoir had consumed fish, including a lot of goldfish and aquatic invertebrates. So there's an, Jay says there's an unbelievable population of uh, goldfish in the reservoir. And um, that's why they're so good, so big and a great population of trout. Gonna be good place once it's open, isn't it? Yeah, amazing. Gets you excited. I had a guy in the shop today who said, um, he said, oh, you, you said on TV last week, you had a tear in your eye when it was announced that Tarrago would be open. Yeah. He said he had a tear in his eye oh. when Tarrago was closed. Oh. And I said, what, you used to fish it? And he goes, you bet. Every, he, he lived in uh, Warrigal. Yeah. And he said, I used to fish Tarrago all the time. He used to walk around the perimeter of the lake, mm. fly fishing. Said it was wow. remarkable in its day. So um, now it's not going to be open tomorrow. There is a water treatment plant that needs to be upgraded to a point where if there was a petrol spill, then the water is still good enough for human consumption. So that's going to take a bit of time. Um, but I tell you what, once it's opened, it's going to be the best, best place in the world, <laughs> I tell you. Uh, all right, coming up next, product of the week. Nikki's going to do that. And we head to the kitchen with Cara next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Good morning, spotters. Stephanie speaking.
Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Okay, welcome back to Talking Fishing and I've got the job of Product of the Week this week, uh, taking over from ads and uh, we've got the Cooler Day Pack um, that you can see from Shimano and I'll just take a bit of a look inside, will we Dave? Yeah, and yeah, see what's what, inside. Yeah. There's something, I think, is it cool? Oh, I don't ads. know, we've got oh, little <laughs> ads, okay, we'll put, we'll put little ads back. <laughs> he can come out of the day pack, uh, there we go. But look, it's a pretty cool backpack. You can keep a few drinks in there, your, your bait, as well, we've yeah. got a front section for is, is that main section kind of waterproof? It I, sure I it is. So it's got quite a large section inside. Yeah. Um, great for a day pack, as it says. So definitely chuck one on. I've gotten a, into backpacks at the minute for a bit of land-based fishing. So if you you can actually put your ice packs in there, or ice packs, ice if drinks, you it wouldn't bait, leak out. Yeah, whatever your, your lunch if you're going for a bit of a day trip. So definitely yeah. something you can do. You've got a little top section as well. Keep something cool up top. Maybe a little bait at the top. Yeah. Where's so. the bits where you said ply holders and that before? Yeah, you? so we're oh. having a bit of a look inside. I'll turn, flip it round a bit. You can actually see they've got a little ply holders either side that you can mm. whack in. So it's a pretty cool little backpack. And uh, mm. I hear you've got a few still at the shop ready to go no, if you're interested. Know, man, but anyway, um, we didn't have much left to do <laughs> with product of the week tonight. But I tell you what, I, Shimano have brought out this range of luggage. There, mm. there must be 20 odd items now in it. And each one's just got these little special things, you know, and, and someone said to me, oh, we've got a backpack. And I said, oh, you've got a backpack and, and come across that. And you yeah. just go, hey, it's just got all those features that are just a little bit different. Yeah, some padding at the back too to keep you Perfect comfy all day. Perfect if you're hiking in, yeah. uh, I know um, up river. Catherine from Better Boating was telling me, she did a mm. trip with um, with Charlie May a couple of weekends ago to the K Kabungra River, I think it is. Um, uh, like a four yeah. kilometre walk in Oof. and a four kilometre uphill walk out. That's You'd what you want to You'd want something take. comfy. Pack your lunch, a yeah. couple of drinks on ice and... A few, um, few lures and off you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm. you can put all your tackle and, and your gear, so mm. that's all good. Um, there you go. Well done, Nikki. Hey, I want to talk to you. Um, we're going to into into the kitchen with Cara very shortly for a beautiful dish, by the way. Yeah, um, looking forward People to it. get your notepads out or get ready to record because it's one that you want to be able to do whenever you want. It's beautiful. Um, but a few people from your club headed down to Bulamero. I saw the yeah. ramp was open. They've seen the ramps open and thought they'd give it a, a burl. So I think it was last Friday they went down and mm. they did extremely well, the Chinook. So I hope they don't mind me saying. Um, but there is heaps of algae I've seen all over the green, Facebook. Green, green water, isn't yeah, it? yeah. Oh, it's like soup, thick soup. So, so did they keep the fish? To eat? I believe they did. I mean, they're still alive. Um, oh, but I would go. just be a bit careful. So check the recommendations, yeah. um, the local and um, what to do. Good size fish. Really good size chinooks. Yeah. I was very impressed. So. Yeah. Yeah, they, it didn't look like hard work by the looks of it. So really? definitely one to put on the list. Method, do you know? I'm assuming trolling. Yeah. They're into trolling, but I don't actually know for sure. Yeah. Great place. Mm. I love that. I've got to get down there mm. shortly. Uh, all right, let's go and have a look in the kitchen. Now, get your notepads out or, or, you know, get ready to record or somehow look us up on Facebook, you know, a couple of days, however we put that up. Good old Kev does all that. Um, have a look at Cara, what she's cooking up tonight in the kitchen. As we enter the festive season, we often find we're watching our hip pockets. So tonight's dish is inexpensive, it's delicious, it's simple, and it's going to impress. We're going to make mussels in a beautiful white wine sauce with some chilli and tomatoes. I'm using shallots in this dish, opposed to brown onions. Now these are going to bring a little sweetness. We're just going to dice these up. And we're going to do the same with our chilies. Now I'm using whole chilies. I will pull the seeds out, but if you do like a bit of spice, definitely leave them in. And we'll just finally dice these as well. I'm using a deep casserole pan for this. You can use a big saucepan or something that's going to fit everything together. So into a hot pan, we're going to add some butter. And let that melt down a little bit. A little bit of colour in there. And it's starting to brown and caramelise, so I'm going to add in our onions and our chilli. We'll fry this off for about a minute. Into here, our salt and pepper, and a very generous splash of some white wine. I'll just let that reduce for a couple of minutes. 
And we're now going to squeeze the juice of the lemon. And I'm going to add some chicken stock. You can use fish stock, but chicken stock will give it an extra little kick. Okay, we're just going to stir that and we'll just let that come back to the boil. We're going to stir in our tomatoes now. I've got a can of crushed tomatoes. Got a little stir. And we're going to add some beautiful fresh parsley. Now you can chop these up. And I'm just going to use some scissors. Final little stir through. Smells beautiful already. We'll just let the heat get back into there and then we'll in with our mussels. All of our ingredients have come together beautifully. Lovely, vibrant colours here. Now, in with our mussels, our hero of this dish. There's a bit of liquid in the bottom there, so we're just going to place them in. And we'll give them a really good stir through. Okay, and we'll pop the lid on and we're going to let them cook for five to six minutes. It's reveal time. Let's see how these mussels are looking. Oh, wow. Yep, they've opened up and they've absorbed all those beautiful juices. Oh, these look amazing. Okay, now we've just got to plate them up. Here we have our beautiful white wine chili tomato mussels. They look gorgeous, they're festive, we've got the pops of red and green, served with some crusty bread, and I'm sure these are going to impress. <laughs> Back on Ads, Adam. What do you reckon? Oh, well, mate? He, he usually commentates for the. I absolutely love eating mussels. Yeah, you're all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me, when you do a cooking mm. thing at home, you know, for friends and that, yep. do you match the colour of your spoon to your dishes? I and can't all say I do that detail. Cara but... does everything to the perfection. <laughs> no, it's, it's so good. Mussels, I tell you what, and I was just telling you while that was on, mm. um, I, I have some old friends I used to work with uh, at Sea Bounty Mussels, seabounty.com.au. They've got the mussel farms out near uh, Mud Island. Yeah. And Lizzie has got a, a recipe similar to that. It's just to die for. Wow. If you, it's not a hard dish to do. There you go, you give it a go. Cara Get some friends cooks around. at your club. So yeah, she... we had we had a squid night at our club and she, she was cooking away. The members loved it, so mm. shout out to Cara. But she actually called me this afternoon and she said, oh, tonight's dish is dedicated to uh, one of your members. So I think uh, one of them showed some, some keenness to mussels just like yourself, there Dave. You go. So. Beautiful dish. And it's, and it's good for you too. So look it up though. Um, whether you look up that Cara's recipe, I'm sure that'll be up on our socials in the next couple of days. Or like I said, sea bounty. Um, and, and, you, and you get the sea bounty mm. mussels from your fresh fish shop. Yep. And it tells you the date they were actually taken out of Port Harvest, Phillip. Harvested. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely wow. beautiful. So you, know that, you know they're fresh and uh, everyone says, oh, you know, if they don't open or if they're already open, they're no good. And I'm telling you, I haven't had a bad muscle out of Port Phillip. You're still here. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's just beautiful. All right, coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag and uh, plenty more to come on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. All right, a bit of mail this week, Nikki, I tell you. Um, and we'll kick it off with a not so good bit of mail. This comes from 98 year old Don Newman down at the Western Port Angling Club on the foreshores of Hastings. And Donnie writes, Hi David, can you please make a comment on talking fishing about the disgusting habit of some fishermen who throw gummy and snapper carcasses onto the grass rather than into the bins provided. I think we'll show you a couple of photos here. These photos I took this morning, uh, which was yesterday, uh, after cleaning up a similar mess on Friday, the photos do not transmit the stench. They are, there are signs provided by the Mornington Peninsula Shire at the tables, although not very conspicuous. Anglers need to be educated to put heads, etc., into the bins. The consequences may, may be that the facility could be shut down. If any, if any anglers see other, others dumping carcasses, could they politely ask them 
to put them in the bins. Thanks, Don. Um, that's not too good, is it? No, no, definitely need to... Uh, I know people are probably used to feeding the pelicans and the stingrays down there. They've actually protested that there's bins there, but no excuse for just throwing stuff on the grass. So thanks, Don. Uh, that one needs to be fixed. This is the complete opposite, this one. This is from Andrew. Andrew writes, Hi, Kramer. I am writing to praise the Victorian Fisheries Authority's efficient illegal fishing reporting system, 1-3-Fish. On Sunday afternoon, I was walking along the boardwalk on the west side of the Jawbone Marine Sanctuary. And at the end of the boardwalk, I could see a collapsible crab trap in the water between large boulders. Through my polarised glasses, I could also see a couple of crab, crabs trapped in, inside the net. There are many signs throughout the sanctuary that ask people to report illegal fishing, including at the very location where I was standing and could see the trap. I called 1-3-Fish, which was answered by a human, uh, and I gave my report. The fisheries duty officer called me back shortly to obtain exact details of the location, and I was advised officers would immediately respond. Within 90 minutes, I was called back and thanked by the duty officer who confirmed that the illegal trap had been removed by the officers for destruction and the trapped crabs were released back to the sanctuary. The point of my email is to say the system works and fishers should not hesitate to call the 13 fish line to report blatant illegal activities which help maintain our fishing ecosystems for our current and future generations. Cheers for that, Andrew. And I tell you, mm. that's, that's good to hear that. I've, yeah. I've never called 13 Fish in my life, have you? No, I haven't had to. No. Yeah. Sounds like it works. That's, that's really good. Really yeah. good. You only ever hear the bad stories, so good to hear those good stories. All right, this one here. Hi, uh, this was, who's this from? Doesn't have his name. Oh, Gordon. He writes, hi, Dave and crew. Spoke with you briefly on Sunday at Cranbourne Tackle World but unfortunately didn't get the chance to ask you if the sell-off of Tackle World will affect talking fishing, with Tackle World being a major sponsor of your show. I sincerely hope that it doesn't, as I feel your show is the only one on television that is truly representative of fishing in Victoria. Thank you, Gordon. Love the show and the information that flows from it. Gordon, we will stay unchanged. Tackle World doesn't contribute a single cent to this show, so um, nothing's gonna change and, and we'll just keep rocking on for now, Nikki. Sounds good. Without Adam. Or, or with, with Adam. or without Adam. Without it, yeah. There you go. There Adam's, we go. There he is. Adam's still in our presence, though. But <laughs> thanks for your concern, Gordon. But life goes on. Um, all right. This is from uh, I don't know Ross, I think. G'day, talking fishing hosts. Uh, I love the show, and of course, Channel Thirty One. Can you please? Oh, here we go. Can you please discuss the topic of coffee cups? and junk food wrappers left at ramps. I launch mostly from Sorrento, and each time see rubbish left, especially during times when kingfish are going off. Uh, thank you for a great show. Cheers, Jono. Uh, P.S. I send, I send number plate photos of untrailered vehicles parked in trailer spots to the Mornington Shire. Keep doing that. Mm. Keep doing that, Jono, because that, they're probably the people that throw the coffee as yeah, well. Yeah, it might the be the same cups. people. Could be. Yeah, definitely need to take your rubbish no, with you. There's definitely some fish shows that the don't right do the right thing. It's just the right thing to do. All right, and this one, last one, is from uh, Les. Les writes, uh, and a big cheerio to Les, by the way, sitting in Epworth Hospital in Warren Ponds after reverse shoulder replacement. What's a reverse I shoulder replacement? I don't know. What is that? Getting his shoulder turned backwards, it sounds <laughs> Left like. onto right, right onto oh, left. Oh, God. Looking out at Cryo Bay, inner and outer, Pain management is difficult as it hurts to not fish. Oh, and the shoulder too. I have a new 429 Stacer with a 60 horsepower Mercury four stroke with about eight hours since I broke the package, oh, since I bought the package. Big shout out to the mob at Bandstar that he bought off. Fishing is buggered for me for a while, but your show is part of the RTF plan, which is the return to fishing plan. <laughs> uh, just to thank, just to say thanks for an honest fair income show. Thanks to all your sponsors and Channel 31 who keep the program uh, going. Next year, I hope I can go again. Please tell viewers to leave a couple for me from Les Cameron, <laughs> a converted viewer. Well done, converted. Les. I don't know what he's... He's had a reverse shoulder and he's converted, so I don't know. Oh, about. Les, that's really lovely to Good hear. On him. I love that, that return to fishing plan. 
Great uh, if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. Now, I want to pick your brain on this one, Nikki. I, I, no, I, well, I know about it a little bit, but yeah. um, you, do, oh, you seem to do a lot of worth nights. We do. We do heaps of events. Yeah. yeah. Now you've got one coming up Friday night. We do next Friday. So we've got Complete Angler Danny Nong. They're going to host us. So come down six till nine. Um, we're going to put out a flyer on the socials tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled. But you can speak to George in store and let us know. So you're they along. book through the shop. Yes, book through the shop. You can definitely ring in or yep. go and see the guys, and uh, they'll put your name down. We'll have a bit of pizza and. Talk about some species and yeah, have saw, a good night. I saw George and Dylan shopping in Tackle World Cramer this morning. Oh, where they are they there? <laughs> good on them. Must be a closing down sale going on. Um, and great guys, and they mm. will surely hold a good night. Um, tell us what sort of th I mean, and, and all the ladies out there, please yeah. get along to one of these nights. They're fantastic. It's it's a ladies only night. It's a ladies in, in night. Look, we don't turn people out the door no. or anything like that but um it's obviously designed for the ladies to learn yeah. a little bit about fishing so if you've got any questions um we're going to be talking about snapper squid and trout specifically so okay. um, we just thought we'd cover some topics but there's plenty of uh q a that you can be had in the store so yep. yeah get a free feed yeah get a free feed come come Lots meet like-minded people some prizes some show yep. bags so yep. yeah we did a similar night at tackle world and we yep. went off so good so look out for the details yeah. on what the worth on the worth network you can have a look uh we might see if fa might be able to share it too yeah probably going to be on but yeah look in store is probably the best best yeah. go for that and, one and probably on complete angler danny on socials and that mm. tomorrow as well so they'll be pumping that and get along there friday night the um, 9th the 9th of december so oh so not this friday not this friday one. following friday oh, so i'll so. oh, better talk about it again next week then so <laughs> all righty uh coming up next the all important hot spots they're coming up on talking fishing the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Uh, just Nick and I are here tonight because Adam's gone AWOL, <laughs> thanks to Rex Airlines and Jetstar apparently. So. Double whammy, but anyway, <laughs> adds us here in spirit. Um, all right, let's get into the hot spots now. And I tell you what, a lot of people catching snapper out of the capital, uh, which is Karen Patterson River boat ramp there. Uh, it's certainly going to be busy this weekend because I think we've got 30 degrees on Saturday Ooh, yeah. and like a five knot northwesterly. Weather's it's, looking good. It's going to be. Finally. It's probably going to be the day mm. of the snapper season. So uh, first hot spot is Aspendale Snapper. Get out there. Um, 18 metres of water off Aspendale seems to be a real hot spot. Lots of the charter guys going there. They'll hate it if I say follow them, but anyway, it's the best way to follow them. <laughs> anyway, all good. Aspendale, 18 metres. Try it. Um, saw some great reports during the week from down at the Rye Channel on Gummy Shark. Wow, now, there you Gummy's go. always big news in Western Port, but never so much in, uh, in Port Phillip. But I tell you what, the Rye Channel at the moment, fishing very, very well, day or night uh, for gummy sharks. So get there. Get your feet a flake, yeah. Now I know 92 year old Don Newman calls Lysart's blue scope steel, but it's still <laughs> Lysart's to us and that's the next hot spot. Just off Hastings there, go deep, tide change uh, an hour either side is probably about the best time and get mm. yourself some snapper there. And the next one, this is a little place that to, people go there for other species like big silver things sometimes mm. but mosquito channel get there through coronella or rill or wherever you want to go from um but just a, a, a special little channel there that holds some beautiful big fish particularly nice. fished well at night so mosquito channel 
All right, place that you were just talking about then. Yeah. Uh, next hot spot is Lake Bull and Merai. Get down there yep. for the Chinook salmon. Did they catch anything else, the members of your club down no, there? No, just Chinook. So, yeah. yeah. Be the target, I guess. The so. time I've fished it, times I've fished it, mm. only ever caught chinooks there. I've I've caught some, just some probably. I think it was a brown trout trolling, but okay. Yeah, generally chinooks. It's not that is they've the had to stop them, but I no, think the chinooks are the dominant species. They love that place. There, so yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. Um, Parambit, you tend to get that bit of bit more of a mix, and yeah. of course the redfin that. The uh, tiger prolific, trout there too. Yeah, so. Tiger trout, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And uh, the lucky last, I tell you, some of the rivers around Victoria are just starting to settle a bit now and running gin clear in some places. One of those places is the Hauka River. And if you've never been there, I tell you what, look up on, I reckon it'd be on YouTube, hmm. a river somewhere, a great oh. show <laughs> from many, many years ago, showing my Rob age Stitch, here, yep. Rob Stitch yep. and Tom Gleisner. And their very first, uh, their very first episode was done at the Hauka River. Oh, well, how nice yeah, is that? A special place. So, and, and you can access the Hauka in a number of ways. One the road that leads to Jamison. Mm. Um, that's yep. where the, the river virtually runs into Lake Eildon. Great place. I mean, you can easily get over the fences there and um, and probably for the first kilometre or two is really, really good fishing. If you want to get right up into the river, you go to Sheepyard Flat and, and access the Hauka right up the top end there. But uh, Travis Dowling does this, the head of fisheries. He's got a little oh. spot that he goes to up the Hauka. You go through Sheepyard Flat, you mm. go up to where you can't drive any further, then he hikes in. Wow. And he still catches fish after fish after fish. And that is a long way up. That is a long way up. So. I've been to Sheepyard Flat and it's, yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a trek in. So yeah. there you go. So anyway, there's the hot spots. Um, I want to I talk about Hauka a little bit because your, yes. your club. Yeah, you, we've had a lodge there. You've got a there. place, a yeah, lodge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's about five clubs that all have, have a lodge in a similar area. And yep. I must admit, it's absolutely on fire for Yellow Valley at the minute on Lake Yildon. Okay. So if you're going to fish the Halkwa River, it might be worth a trip to go for some Yellow Valley. So yeah, yep. we've got a lodge up there that we have regular trips up. And now, you get to that mm. lodge as you're driving so down the hill yeah, before down the hill you before, cross the Halkwa. Yeah, before you cross the Halkwa. Yep. So yeah, it's kind of off to the side. Now, and, now yeah. I'm asking... I'm asking this for a friend, right? Yeah. If you join your club, do you get that accommodation free? You do on club trips. <laughs> you still, oh. yeah. You, there's a small fee if you uh, if you book it out, but there's plenty of availability, and yeah, we um. So if I want to have, have uh, no, if my friend wanted to have their Christmas holidays at say the Hauka Lodge, <laughs> what you just join the club? Is I'm it pretty sure that? that weekend's booked out, but yeah. Uh, yeah, look, obviously that's one of the luxuries our members have. Yeah. So we've got another lodge as well down at Port Albert, but. Uh, yep. Yeah, some of the clubs now, now, around I'm, the I'm, I'm drilling you on this, right? So, so how does it, so you so you've got this lodge. Yep. If there's a club trip, everyone gets to sleep there. Correct. Everyone gets to stay there for free. Like bunks and stuff like yep, that. Yeah. Everyone's there's share, like twenty shared. beds. You can swag it outside, yep. which I do. If you want to book it for your family, how yep. do you do that? You join the club. You got to be become a full member, not a provisional. So yep. you'd have to wait the year, okay. um, and then you would be able to book it when it's available. Do you have to go to the 80 meetings a year that you have? You don't. <laughs> you do have to show show that you're a keen member. I'm asking this for a friend, right? So, um, okay. Look, I might be able to take you up the day. No, no, no. no I'll just, yeah, we'll no. take little you know ads with us. I've actually stayed there. I, I was you with, said that. Yeah, I was with yeah. another um, a club out of Elwood. Uh, El, not Elwood. Um, Eltham. Oh, Unless they've got a lodge the there too. I don't know. Anyway, it was good. Yeah, it's a great place. That great place good. to visit. I think. And where do you launch your boat? Goffs Bay. Goffs Bay. Yeah. Yep. 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 We did that. Mm. And, um, out of the, I think I went up there with about forty members. Wow. Yeah, and four of us fished. <laughs> the rest of them didn't go fishing at all. <laughs> anyway, it was a good fishing club that one. Um, all right, a big shout out. I, I, I keep forgetting to put mm. this up, but three MP. We, we, Adam and I are on every Saturday morning. Uh, if you ever want to listen to us, 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock on Saturdays. But we also relay, so anyone watching uh, around the state, we relay through 10 different radio stations through the ACE radio network. So we're virtually from Portland to Mildura to Albury to Bem River yeah, and everywhere in between. So what a spread. But then you can also get it just on any podcast. Oh, yeah, you can get it. Yeah, early. I, that's what I do. I, I can't want. get up that early, Dave. It's a bit early. Oh, either do I. It's pre-recorded. But... Uh, um, 
these are the people, Joe Farr, these are charter guys. Joe Farr we talked to, Zach Cross from Cross Country Fishing Charters, Steve Johnson from Ace Fishing Charters, they're on every week. Brett Geddes, who is in Marimbula right now, we're talking to him about the Marimbula, he's trying to catch a kingfish in the lake because the kingies are going off there. Uh, Gage Wright out at Horsham, Rocklands, has more than doubled its water volume in the, in, uh, since September. We're talking to Gage this week, and Terry Phillips up in Echuca is going to tell us how bad the floods are mm. at the start of cod season. So anyway, that's a you know pretty big um, it's a pretty big show every week, and it's very different to this TV show where we just talk fishing with a whole lot of experts. So get into it, um, have a listen, three MP. All right, that's it for talking fishing. Thanks heaps, Nikki. No, Adam, oh, you've done that's very right. well. No, I've enjoyed um, myself. We hope you enjoyed the show. Two more sleeps until cod season opens. Don't forget that. And we have our first 30-degree days coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. They're both looking glorious. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.